Good morning, friends. Welcome to Walking Through His Word with Darina here on this March 3rd, 2023. So we're on 3323. And I am excited about this time that we're going to be together here for the next about 30 minutes. Um, if you're new around here, these are broadcasts that I do every Friday, and I love to just dig into God's Word with you. And so I consider it kind of a treasure hunt where we get to walk through God's Word together. I've been walking through the Psalms with you all actually for the last couple of years here, started in March 2020. And today we're going to be looking at Psalm 116. So I don't orchestrate which Psalms fall on which days. I just pretty much march through and I want to invite you, if you're able, to get out your Bibles and to join me, or if you are getting kids ready for school or commuting or maybe running, that you would just listen in as we walk through Psalm 116 together. I want to just also invite you that if you're here with me live this morning, that I always want to extend that invitation for you to engage. And so one of the fun things about this technology, I'm live here on Instagram and on Facebook, is that you can share share in the comments. And so if there's something that I'm reading that sparks an idea for you, or if you want to share a prayer request, we will be praying corporately together at the end of the broadcast. So feel free to to share your praises, your prayer requests, whatever comes to mind. And if you're watching this later as a recording, you can feel free to share your prayer requests then. And I always do read the comments and just take a little bit of time out to be praying for you, for my listeners and readers. So friends, um, I'm so glad you could be with me today. I see so many of you are joining me live this morning. I would love it if you would share what city you're joining from and Drop a little emoji or a couple of emojis and let me know what has your week been like? Has this been a crazy week for you? Has it been an exciting week for you? Are there any emojis that kind of uh, encapsulate the type of week that you had? I actually can't believe that it's Friday. We have had a full week at our house. Um, I am coaching track and field with my husband, Sean, and so that means I'm outside with our high school track team. Basically, 2.30 2.30 to 7 p.m. every day. So it's a full, full, full season for us. And I'm also in the midst of writing a book. So I'm writing, actually, it's a Bible study on the book of Ruth, which is very exciting, something that I've had on my heart for several years. And I'm sort of sprinting towards the finish. So I would appreciate your prayers as March is my final month for writing. Um, the book is due at the end of this month, and it's a six-week Bible study so I um, I just have my head deep in that. If you could see my desk right now, you would see about 20 books piled high right next to me <laughs> um, and water and my drawer full of snacks and all of the notebooks and all of the post-it notes. Um, so that's kind of what my daily life is sitting here in the office um, outside of driving kids around to their activities as well. I love being able to see some of you live here and I see Brett's here from Chicago. I see... Christy's here from Monterey Park. I see my brother is here from Southern California. Uh, Malia from St. Paul, Minnesota. I see some friends from the Bay Area and from Fresno, California, where I live. Glad that so many of you could be with me live. And just a quick shout out to friends over on Facebook as well who are joining through the Widow Mama Collective and the Glory Chasers Christian Running Group, which are two Facebook groups that I actually... um, also facilitate. And I see my friend Rachel is here. She says she's in the airport headed back to Cali. Um, Week ended heartbroken. Oh friend, I'm so sorry. Well, you know what? That is probably a good transition into our Psalm 116 because this is a beautiful personal Psalm. It's a Psalm of Thanksgiving, a Psalm of praise. And yet we also hear just the immense gratitude Um, that this person who has written this psalm, and it doesn't tell us the author, but we, we hear the gratitude. We also hear that they have been through some pretty hard times, some difficult times. And so I thought this one is so good for today, especially for any of my friends who are listening in, who are feeling weary, who are feeling broken, um, who are just crying out to God today. 
with honesty. And so on that note, we're going to go ahead and dive in. I'm going to be reading today from a little bit different translation than I normally do. I actually just got this new Bible. It is the New Living Translation, and it's a journaling Bible, which I'm looking forward to using. And I'm actually going to be doing a special um, a gift for my oldest daughter. So shh. I don't think she's listening today, but I'm going to be using this beautiful new Bible. And, you know, the New Living Translation is a translation that I have been getting into a little bit more lately. I love just the beauty and the flourish of the language. And so I thought it would be nice to start there today. Psalm 116, starting with verse 1. I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy because he bends down to listen. I will pray as long as I have breath. Death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. And then I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. How kind the Lord is, how good he is. So merciful, this God of ours. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. I was facing death and he saved me. Let my soul be at rest again for the Lord has been good to me. He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so I walk in the Lord's presence as I live here on earth. I believed in you. So I said, I am deeply troubled, Lord. In my anxiety, I cried out to you. These people are all liars. What can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. I will keep my promises to the Lord in the presence of all his people. The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. Oh Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. I will offer you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem. So friends, um, if you're just joining me, I see that a couple of you just jumped on. I am reading today from Psalm 116. And this beautiful psalm is in the category of what we call a personal Thanksgiving psalm. Um, But what I love about this psalm is that personal language. I almost feel like I'm reading like a prayer journal. Um, And it doesn't tell us who actually wrote this one. Usually we do get to know a little bit more about who the author is. But if you can imagine yourself writing a psalm like this, I want to ask you, for those of you who are here live, is there anything that kind of bubbled to the surface? Is there a theme or a phrase or a couple of words that just hit you as you were listening to or reading along with Psalm 116 here? You know, I love verse one where it just so simply says, I love the Lord because he hears my voice and my prayer for mercy. So beautiful to remember that our God who is in the heavens, who is omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, all-knowing, who is above all of the earth, who is truly powerful, as we have read in some of the recent Psalms that we've been walking through, he also is personal. And so I imagine our God just like a daddy or a mentor or a friend, just leaning in, just um, his chin on his hand, leaning in close to listen and to hear us as we are crying out to him, this prayer, this prayer of thanksgiving, this prayer of relief and this cry for mercy that we see here in Psalm 116. I love just imagining and knowing that our God is so personal in that way. Um, And so here in the New Living Translation, it says, because he bends down to listen, I will pray as long as I have breath and My friend Brett here from Chicago, who's saying, you know, that phrase, praise as long as I have breath, how powerful and how beautiful that is that that we would spend our time, friends, praying 
that as long as we are breathing, that we are invited to pray without ceasing, as it says in, in other parts of the Bible as well. And, you know, it strikes me here that a lot of times I personally am striving. I am trying to check things off this to-do list. I'm trying to make my deadlines. And yet what I'm actually invited into is prayer. It's conversation with God. That that's the thing that truly matters is sitting at Jesus' feet. And so I love this psalm as a model of what that looks like. So in verses 1 through 4 of Psalm 116 that we're looking at today, we hear that that sentiment. We hear this person, and it sounds like they're, they experience something near death. And so there's a deep gratitude within them. In verse 3, it says, The snares of death encompass me. The pangs of Sheol laid hold on me. That's in the ESV translation. In the New Living Translation, which I first read from, it says, death wrapped its ropes around me. The terrors of the grave overtook me. I saw only trouble and sorrow. And so someone who is experiencing deep grief, deep sorrow, perhaps a near-death experience, and then it says, I called on the name of the Lord. Please, Lord, save me. Now, that's an important phrase that I want us to pay attention to that I'm going to come back to later. It's a, ref it's a refrain or a phrase that's repeated a few times in this psalm. And that phrase, I called on the name of the Lord, was often used in public prayer, in corporate prayer. So when somebody was praying alongside others in a service, a worship service perhaps, or at the temple, that this was a public prayer. And this cry in verse four is, oh Lord, I pray, deliver my soul. And so it's crying out to God for deliverance. Now, if you've been around here for a little bit, you know that one of the things that I always like to ask of the text is what can we learn about God? And so right here in this next section in verses five through seven, we see some very key qualities, some of God's attributes. And I wanna just highlight a couple of these here because the psalmist, the person writing this psalm and really crying out from their hearts is also reminding themselves of who God is. So it says, gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is merciful. The Lord preserves the simple. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return, O oh my soul, to your rest. For the Lord has dealt bountifully with you. Now, I'm going to get my pen out because I even noticed another one that's mentioned there that I didn't have written down. But here's a couple of the words that remind us of God's attributes. And I want you to type in the comments if there are any of these that you really needed to hear today. The first is gracious, verse 5. And in the New Living Translation, it says how kind the Lord is. So either kindness or graciousness. And then in the ESV, it has righteous. He is righteous. Another way to say that is that he is good. Um, and then it talks about how merciful this God of ours is. He is gracious and righteous and merciful. And then in verse 6, it talks about when I was brought low, he saved me. And so he is our savior. It's that sweet reminder that he is our savior. The Lord protects those of childlike faith. Um, so he is a protector. That's what the New Living Translation says here. I'm kind of going back and forth because I love the, the different words that are used in the New Living and the ESV. The Lord preserves the simple. So he's a preserver and a savior. And then finally, um, it concludes with verse 7 saying, The Lord has dealt bountifully with you. In the New Living, it says, let my soul be at rest again for the Lord has been good to me. So a reminder that we serve a God who is good. We serve a God of abundance. We serve a God who deals bountifully with us, who gives us rest. And you know, this is a theme all throughout the Old Testament that God brings rest to his people. He offers rest. And so there's a lot of talk about Sabbath as a day of rest, as um, different instructions of how to observe the Sabbath. But at the heart of that is a God who desires to bring his people rest. We see this in Exodus as 
God brings his people out of 400 years of slavery in Egypt. Now, when they were slaves, they were not resting. And so what God brings them into is a restorative rest where they might be in relationship with him, that he might draw close, his presence would be close to his people, and that he would offer them rest. And so I love how the psalmist highlights that here. I'm going to go ahead and keep walking through this psalm as we look at the next section, verses 8 through 11. And one of the things that comes out at the top of verse 8 in the ESV, it says, For you have delivered my soul from death. In the New Living Translation, it says, He has saved me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling. And so again, that idea that God is our deliverer. He is our savior. And I love that the Psalms that were written hundreds of years before Jesus was even born are always pointing to our savior to come, to our redeemer to come. And so for those of us who are living today, March 3rd, 2023, we have the privilege of living, as we say, this side of the cross, meaning we know the end of the story. We know that Jesus came to earth, that he came as a substitute for our sins, that he came to offer rest, that he came to give us eternal life so that we don't have to face death in this way. That yes, our bodies will die, but that we get to be in eternal rest with God. And So just reminding us that he delivers us today from life's challenges, but he also delivers us for eternity when we choose to believe in him. Um, And that is something that we get to live out in heaven. And that makes me excited, friends. I don't know about you, but that makes me very excited. Um, So we're going to go ahead and keep marching through here, Psalm 116, to this final section, which I will say verses 12 through 19. And it's interesting because, again, this one is kind of a call to public prayer. It's a call to thanksgiving in a circle, thanksgiving with other worshipers. Verse 12 in the ESV says, What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. Um, Looking at the New Living Translation, which kind of um, puts it in a little bit more simple terms, what can I offer the Lord for all he has done for me? In the same phrase, I will lift up the cup of salvation and praise the Lord's name for saving me. So that's what I was just talking about. This idea that um, God has offered us this cup of salvation. And so we lift it up. We say, yes, Lord, we accept this cup. We believe in this cup. And just this reminder again, friends, that Um, we are invited to call on the name of the Lord. So we have that same phrase that's repeated here. It's in verse four, it's in verse 13 and verse 17. And so it's that call to pray together, which is exactly what we're doing together today. Um, And I pray also that you would have other opportunity to pray with people in person. Maybe there's an opportunity even this weekend for you to pray with your children, with your husband, with others in your faith community, if you attend a church on Sundays, or if you are part of a small group, that that time in prayer is precious, where we can gather around, where we can praise, and where we can cry out to God. So as we're continuing to march through here on verse 14, it says, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. And I wanna just um, think about what does that exactly mean here? It's reminding us that God cares about us personally. And so this psalmist perhaps has had some kind of near death experience or felt like they were at the end of their life and just recognizing that God cares about us there. He cares about when his saints are experiencing death and He also meets us there. You know, um, this was powerful to me as I was reading this because last week, um, actually on Friday, was the funeral of one of my dear friends. Um, His name is Pastor Jebby. And I knew him as Jebby when he was just a teenager, Um, but he was a pastor. He became a pastor and a father and a wonderful mentor and shepherd in Haiti. 
Um, I taught English in Haiti in my young 20s, and then after I married my husband, Eric Lee, we started a nonprofit organization in the country of Haiti, kind of following in the footsteps of his grandparents who started a mission there in 1947. And so it was a heavy and hard week for me last week, just recognizing that my dear friend, he was 40 years old, um, had three young kids and was married and that he had gone to heaven. And he actually had battled cancer for seven years. He was diagnosed with cancer um, just a little bit after my first husband, Eric Lee, went to heaven and had died of cancer. And so even in seven years, recognizing that God cared about this beloved son, seeing that God in his mercy allowed Jebby to have seven additional years of life, of ministry, of having babies. Um, and so here as I'm reading in verse 15, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints, that God cares about even the death of his saints. And even though I have a confidence that my friend Jebby is in heaven today, that his body is renewed, that he is hanging out with my friend and my beloved husband, Eric Lee, um, I know that God cares about that transition, about that passage, and he cares about those of us who are left behind. Um, and I'm continuing to pray for Marlene, his wife, and his three precious boys who will continue to live in the grief and also in the glory of Jabby's legacy, his deep faith that he had in God. Um, so I wanted to just share a little bit of that as we're continuing on. In verse 16, it says, O oh Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have loosed my bonds. Um, the New Living Translation here, a little bit different wording, just says, The Lord cares deeply when his loved ones die. So that was the last verse. Oh, Lord, I am your servant. Yes, I am your servant, born into your household. You have freed me from my chains. So I love it. The psalmist is calling out that we have freedom when we are believers in God, and then eventually pointing to our Savior, Jesus Christ, that this cup of salvation is something that we can hold on to, and that in that, there is freedom. There is a freedom. I love this vivid language, you loosed my bonds, or in the New Living Translation, how it says, you have freed me from my chains. That gives us such a powerful visual and um, again, something to be in deep gratitude to the Lord. In verse 17, it says again, call on the name of the Lord. I will call upon the name of the Lord. So it, urging us to praise God. And then here, as we kind of land the plane, the final verses of Psalm 116. Um, I love these verses where it says, I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the house of the Lord, in the heart of Jerusalem. And in the ESV, it ends with that phrase, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. So we see that this is a psalm of thanksgiving. It is a psalm of praise. And yet there is a deep emotion here. There's a tenderness in the way that the psalmist writes this. Um, I think about Romans 12, 15 in the New Testament that talks about rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. And we get that feeling here in Psalm 116 that the Lord is leaning in close and that he hears our prayers for mercy. So friends, um, in our final minutes, I'm gonna move into a time of prayer. And I wanna just invite you that if you have a prayer request, something that is troubling your heart, um, if like this psalmist, you feel downtrodden, you feel heartbroken, you feel near to death, that you would just share a word or a couple words in the comments or even just a little emoji so I know I'm going to pray for this person if it's an unspoken request. Um, I also want to urge you to share your praises. Is there something you're praising God for today? We've seen that the psalmist is praising God for his attributes, for who God is, and for the ways that God saves us and delivers us and breaks us from our chains and offers us freedom. So these are just a few of the ideas of things that we can be praising God for. And maybe you have something even more specific 
Maybe there's something that has happened this week that you want to praise God for. I want to invite you into that and to engage with me in the comments um, as I pray aloud now. Um, please join me. Lord Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for Psalm 116. And I pray Psalm 116 verse 1. I love you, Lord, because you hear my voice and my prayer for mercy. I thank you, God. I thank you that you are a God who hears us that you do not leave us alone, but you hear us, Lord. God, I wanna thank you for the ways that um, your attributes, your character lifts our soul. I wanna thank you for being a God who is gracious, who is righteous, who is merciful, who is bountiful. And I thank you, God, that you meet us with those things. I wanna pray for a few of my friends here in the comments. On Instagram Live, I'm praying for Mama T who asks for peace in her house. God, I don't pretend to know the details of what's going on in her home right now, but we know that you are a God of peace. You are a God who brings peace that passes understanding. We know that you are a God who guides us, who gently shepherds us, and that you are peace, that peace is a person and that person is you. And so we invite you into Mama T's house today. We invite you to bring a sense of peace in whatever is going on, anything that feels chaotic or misunderstanding or miscommunication, God, that you would cover those things like a balm, that you would bring supernatural peace to her home and to all of our homes. God, I pray for Brett who is also asking us to lift up our children. And as I think about my three daughters, I'm also lifting them up today as I'm getting ready to bring them to school, as we're closing out another week, as we are in the midst of track and field and sports seasons, God, would you be with them? As they are taking their spelling tests today and their verse tests and um, chemistry tests, God, would you be with my children? Would you bring to mind the things that they have read, that they have studied? Um, and for all of those who have children who are listening today, God, we pray over our kids. I also want to pray for um, Aunt Becky here on Instagram. She says she's facing a hysterectomy in the coming months. And so we pray for her body. God, we pray um, just for a calm and a healing, if it be your will. Um, and through this procedure, through this hysterectomy that's going to be done, God, I pray that you would give her a sense of your presence. I pray that you would walk with her through it and also through the recovery as well. And I see my friend Christy here on face or on Instagram is also saying that her body is failing. And so God, I pray that you would meet her in that place. Our bodies are broken, God. And we know that you are a healer. You don't choose to heal everyone here on earth, but you heal some in heaven. God, we pray for Christy along with others who may be suffering from some kind of physical ailment, some kind of chronic pain. God, would you meet them, give them perseverance, help them to keep their eyes focused on you, even in what they're suffering. Um, I want to also just lift up this little praise here from my friend Malia on Instagram, who's saying that she credited God for spiritual fruit instead of saying thank you. And then she was complicated mented by a Christian friend. God, thanks for meeting her in that very specific situation. Um, we also want to pray for a close friend of ours, Merlene, for healing from a stroke. She had a stroke in her brain. Um, God, there's so many ways that our, our bodies are broken. And so we just continue to pray for healing. We pray for wisdom and clarity for doctors and other specialists who might be working with those who are hurting. And ultimately, God, we pray for people to know you and your presence um, so they might just enjoy eternity with you no matter what happens. God, thank you for this time that we could come together. We praise your name. We thank you for the ways that you have delivered us, that you have saved us, that you have offered us freedom from our chains, from our suffering, from our challenges. And for anybody who might be walking through that journey right now, I pray that they would be reminded of who you are, God. I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen.
Well, friends, thank you for being with me today for walking through his word with Darina. Um, This is my Friday broadcast every week at 7 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Eastern time. And basically what I do is I walk through a psalm. And so it's an opportunity for us to dig into the scriptures, to go on a little bit of a treasure hunt and to be able to see what we can learn about God and what we can apply to our lives. Um, A couple of resources that I want to share. So this is the new Bible that I was mentioning, the New Living Translation. It is the Hope and Encouragement Bible from Dayspring. I'm so excited about this new Bible that I'm going to be starting to use. And it has journaling, um, just little sections on the sidebars so that you can write down um, little notes. The other thing I would like to show you is a new magazine that came out this week. It's called Everyday Faith. And this is a magazine actually that I have the privilege of writing for. And you know what I just noticed? That same Bible is featured on the cover. That's so funny. I didn't recognize that before, um, that New Living Translation Bible. But I have an article in this magazine. It's called Feasting. What if Lent was more about feasting on the presence of God? And so if you have a chance to pick up a copy of this magazine, they sell it, I know, at Target, Barnes & Noble. You can jump online to dayspring.com and check it out. And the very first article is an article that I wrote about Lent. And we're now in the season of Lent. We've just finished the first full week of Lent. And it talks about what does it really mean to rejoice in the season of Lent. So I'm excited to be able to share that with you. This is part of Everyday Faith Magazine. You know I love sharing resources. And last but not least, I just wanted to mention that I have a new children's book that is coming out in April. And I'm going to be sharing more about that in the weeks to come. But I would love it if you hopped over to Amazon or wherever you buy your books and check out Chasing God's Glory. Put it on your wish list or pre-order a copy of it. It's coming out on April 11th. I'm so excited about this book and just being able to invite kids of all ages to learn about God's glory and how to chase it through our everyday. So thanks for being with me today, friends. I will be back here next Friday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. And please know that you are always welcome to DM me, send me a private message of anything you would love for me to pray over. I consider it an honor that I would be able to connect with you personally and pray over the things that you are facing in your lives. So be blessed. I pray that this weekend is full of rest and that you will take a little time to go back and look at Psalm 116. Take care.